and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. I'm Ari. I'm Nick. And I'm Josh. And for the very first time, we have somebody phoning in to our panel. Because of challenging times, we'll say, uh, there are people that would rather not attend things in person, but they are more than happy to uh, phone in and take part in our discussions. So, the person that is taking part in our discussion of the opening monologue for the Doctor Who episode, Heaven Sent, uh, spoken by Peter Capaldi and written by Stephen, Stephen Moffat. Moffat. Please welcome Trevor to the panel! <laughs> Welcome back, Trevor. Hi, right, Trevor. You turned into a shelter there. Good to be here, even if I'm not here. <laughs> How's everything been, Trevor? Uh, very... Bleh. Sorry, got a little mixed up there for a minute. I got think, caught in the metaphysics. I think things are a little bit bad when uh, <laughs> we're not filming... When, when I'm not filming, at least, either. Uh, but this really picks my spirits up. Uh, filming content. Why? Are they falling down? <laughs> no, he drank all of them. The non-alcoholic ones, yes. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, so, as you know, we're going over the uh, Heaven Sent monologue. And uh, Ari, you have a discussion starter? I do. And, you know, I, uh, I know that sometimes when it comes to monologues and to uh, documentaries, uh, not documentaries, um, documents, excuse me, uh, sometimes we go a little bit off talk about the the the, um, the actual episodes themselves but today I kind of just want to focus on the theme of what this is talking about what do you think that this speech is kind of portraying what is it talking about do you think it's talking about steps towards death do you think that it's talking about what you li how you live your life do you think that it has to do and and we know that like in in the episode itself I should just mention that um the reason the speech is made is because there is something chasing Doctor Who, the Doctor, throughout this episode. It's a very slow moving thing, but eventually it does catch up to him and it kills him and he's able to teleport himself back to the point of when he first started before it actually kills him. So he technically causes himself to become himself and it's a whole loop. I think it does have to do with the death, but at the same time it also has to do with what, what you're going to make out of the time in between because uh, death is, is it's inevitable. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be creeping up on you, be it when you're least expecting it mm -hmm. or when you're expecting it. it. It's I mean, when you're running, it's, go, it's making its way slowly. But and, when, that, and that actually was going to be the official discussion starter yeah. question, was what you had just mentioned, is that do we think we're talking about a person, or do we think we're talking about death as like a, a person, as like a physical object, I think manifestation? That, I think the way that they're portraying death is kind of like it's slightly personified, but at the same time, factor the main faction is that it's an idea, because it's that idea that I think they talk about the moments where you would think about death, but at the same time, it's not supposed to bog you down. Mm -hmm. There are people that only think about the inevitable. They think about the conclusion, and it's a negative conclusion. That's not what we are supposed to be doing in life. We're supposed to be living our lives to the fullest. Right. We're supposed to be making uh, we're supposed to be making the most out of it with death aside. Go forth with everything going on because I hope you're listening to this, Trevor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, go go forth with everything going on because if you keep thinking about the inevitable, you're not gonna get anything done. That's life wasted. Yeah. That's not living. I think you know ha what Peter Capaldi whether he's playing a doctor or not, I think just I actually did make a mistake. I think I think Peter Capaldi actually did. He might have written a speech, and Stephen just wrote it on the paper. So I don't know how you want to interpret that, mm -hmm. but because he did that with a lot of the Doctor Who monologues, he wrote, mm -hmm. he would come up with them, and then Stephen would write them down. Yeah. But um, what I'm saying is that I think you know it's trying to say, okay, keep you're going to keep going, mm -hmm. but something is always going to be approaching, and one day 
you know, you're going to sit too still or sleep too deep, I think is the word to use. And, you know, you're going to end your life. And I think, or not, not you're going to end your life, but your life will end. And I think just, you know, it kind of, to me, reminds me of old age. Like, things start yeah, that's to get when a little slower. Very often, death will creep up at you when you're sleeping, but that's also viewed as the best way to go. Right. While you're peacefully in your sleep. Exactly. This kind of reminds me a little bit of the both the one for the Angels Twilight Zone and the Robert Redford Twilight Zone. Mm. I don't remember what the second one's called. I Trevor, think do you I know, know what the one called? you're talking about. Checking is now. Okay. Robert, I think uh, the Robert was that the, yeah, that was the yeah, older woman. Yeah. Time, yeah, I remember that one. Well, nothing yeah, but in I don't the dark, that's what it was no, called. Yeah, nothing in the dark, that's okay. what it was called. Yeah, that was part of the best episode series. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, what were your thoughts, Nick? I actually thought it was kind of inspirational because at the time that I was reading it, I wasn't really in good headspace. I was kind of getting a little depressed, and this this was kind of like going through, basically saying like, like what you said, you got to live mm -hmm. your life and like forget that even death is going to happen. Oh. And it was just, I thought it was real. I've never seen a Doctor Who episode, so. I'm one of those people. I because this, this monologue, I should probably put a little bit of perspective into this. This monologue happens immediately after his companion just died. Literally, mm. she killed herself because she didn't know the rules of how a certain alien was going to kill someone who was on trial. So she died. After this episode, you know, they ruin it by bringing her back to life. But that's not the point. The point mm. is he is grieving right now when he says this. He's in, This is like the closest companion he's had in, in probably since the beginning of the modern era mm. of the show. And he's grieving when he is speaking these lines. And you can kind of tell by the way they're worded mm. that it's not just saying, oh, live your life. Don't worry about what's coming, but there is something coming, but don't just keep living your life. It's also just someone who has just experienced death kind of explaining what they have just happened. What has just but happened? There's, but there like are, yeah, there's also problems. people that end their life because of uncertainty, of mm -hmm. one, because they don't know if, there, if there's going to be good that comes out of the future. Mm -hmm. right. Virginia Woolf uh, killed herself because of that great fear that she had about a second world war which happened but only it, it ended after a few years time things they relatively got better mm -hmm. it's that whole idea that uh, i think it makes it even, even more important it yeah. makes it makes this concept of living your life more important but it's 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 interesting because it's emphasizing on the end on the grief not on the actual offense that you live in your life like like Trevor, um, do you remember what I told you a shiva is? A shiva is an event that happens after someone dies. And what it is is you have the funeral, and then you have the shiva. And the shiva it takes place at the family's home, and there's prayers, and there's happy things to remember the mm. person's life while also feeling the sadness and loss of what has already happened. So you have like an ambivalent feeling of both happiness and sadness. In this way, what, what this monologue with uh, Peter Capaldi is kind of explaining is like, you know, cherish what you have in life, but just know that there is an end and that it's okay to be sad about that, but to be happy about the life you have led. In, in a way, uh, the Shiva is actually a um, Hebrew word for the number seven, mm -hmm. uh, obviously to mention the, a, a week, because you're supposed to do it for a week. Mm -hmm. Eight fingers. Eight fingers? Yeah, your thumb was out too. Oh, <laughs> that's not. I wasn't considering that. But everybody, <laughs> uh, Trevor, how did you approach the work? In, in this case, it's not just a question of life and death, but also a question of different parts of the personality, which seem to, to seem to haunt the, you in a way. Is it what's coming up behind you? Could very well be a part of your past that you don't really want to keep bringing to the surface, and when it gets to you, at the, at the, at the when it catches up to you, is the life that you want to lead it is over, and you basically now just, uh, well, while your life may be over, your existence still continues, and you're basically just cringing in the corner. I, I think I kind of get where you're coming from with that, Trevor, because I know you've told me before that some of the uh, experiences you've had in the, in the past, like middle school, high school, you know, they kind of shaped who you are now in a way. You, you know what experiences I'm talking about, right? I think so. Uh, 
So, like, I think what you're trying to explain, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is um, that, you know, the experiences you had kind of shaped what you are, uh, but, you know, even though you move past the experiences, the experiences that you had, they don't just sit there. They kind of move at a slower pace, but they're kind of still there. Yeah, I, I, could, I could feel that. It doesn't have to necessarily do with death. It can also have to yeah. do with, uh, I mean, he says your life could be over, but that might more mean... Just yeah, it could be something detrimental on your life. Yeah. But at the same I think time, that's what Trevor's yeah, trying to I, say. I see it more from the death perspective because that seems to be what the backdrop is for this particular. But episode. you know, knowing some of the things Trevor has told me, uh, that actually makes a lot of sense for him. Yes. Like Trevor, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, a lot of sense for you and what you've been through. I can actually attest to what you're saying. Um, but I can also attest to what, what you're saying about you know death. There's different ways to look at the same thing. This being in the perspective of the work at hand, and that being the episode of Heaven Sent for Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, Heaven Sent might just be one of the best Doctor Who episodes ever. It is a two-parter, but really don't watch the second part. It's trash. Mm -hmm. It's part of the, <laughs> the finale for that season. Right. Uh, I don't know. Was that Peter Capaldi's last? or Second to last. It was his middle season. Okay. He was in three seasons? Then? He was in three seasons and a couple specials. The reason this one's so good is because it is the only Doctor Who episode to this day where there is only two cast members, the monster and the Doctor. The majority of the episode is just him talking to himself and griefing to himself. Mm. And that's part of the monologue, too. Mm. So you literally just see him walking around this castle talking to himself, making scientific quotes. Mm. Occasionally he's in the time machine talking to himself. Occasionally the... The companion pops up as like a ghost, but other than that, he's doing it all himself, mm. and that is the sign of a brilliant actor. Mm -hmm. Which is which is why I think that's he made of Britain. That's monologue. why monologues in general are very uh, the twelfth doctor in yeah. the theater. The twelfth doctor is famous for like each doctor has an individual mm. trait. His was monologues. I think Peter Capaldi may have actually written the majority of his own monologues, even mm. though Stephen Moffat would put it on the page. I think he would tell Stephen what to say a hmm. lot of times. Do we have any final thoughts? Trevor, any final thoughts? Well, considering all the different interpretations we've given it, all I can say is who's to say that, they, that somewhere along the way they don't overlap. But yeah, he's, he's right. It could mm. overlap. That's a good point, Trevor. Mm. And also, Trevor, just remember that, you know, this is written, like, by for a character who is billions of years old, at this point, and by a um, by a actor who is at least fifty years old, who's had a lot of experience in these kinds of things. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, I think it kind of shows just a little bit mm -hmm. the, the the age and the and the importance and the it kind of like the I guess the I'm not sure what the word is, but mm -hmm. experience. experience. Yeah, the experience. Yeah, you both you both said it. Experience. <laughs> I pretty much spoke my case, uh, so I really don't have much of a I, I appreciate it's your just, case a lot. Uh, it's just, I think that uh, from this context, I think that it is very thought-provoking and says a lot about not just life itself, but how we should be living it, how we should, how we should be responding. There's things that we cannot control, but we need to worry about what we can. Mm -hmm. And my final thought. My absolute final thought is, of the three of you, did any of you actually hear the speech? Did, or did you guys all just read it? I, I heard it. it. I read it. I read it. Alright. I the, didn't watch the episode, but you, I did Yeah, it's speech. okay. You don't have to watch the whole episode. I read a it summary. Just, it's really good, but you don't... You didn't just hear like it. Nick, and yeah. So Trevor and, and Nick, I would strongly suggest hearing this because the, the power that... Capaldi is able to put in his voice also makes them all kind of like with what um, Mr. Rogers did in his thing. He used the power of his voice to explain what he wanted to explain. It was more of a quiet strike with, with uh, Mr. Rogers. But yeah, I, I still think that's like a type of power. Yes. There is, but the voice of the of whoever is speaking a monologue is very important. The tone and stuff. Yeah, the tone. And right. I appreciate that we were able to stay on the topic of the speech as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, and uh, where do you think viewers should uh, would be able to find? So there are a couple options if you would like to hear this monologue and watch the episode, which I would, I would definitely suggest. Uh, first of all, HBO Max has Modern Doctor Who episodes on there. You could check that out there. You can also buy the Series 9 DVD, probably on Amazon. Um, so this is Doctor Who Series 9, 
um, which came out in, Trevor, what year was it? Do you know? It was 2017? It was season nine, though. That's Those are pretty much the two best places to look, is HBO Max and, oh, and also if you have BritBox, uh, I know a lot of people don't have that, but if you do have BritBox, um, you might be able to find it on there as well. Mm. But HBO Max is the better uh, place to go. Alrighty then, uh, thank you for tuning into this discussion, and I hope you check out some more videos from our channel. Uh, uh, next week will be Spring Break Week on, on Literary Gladiators, uh, so we will be releasing mm. five discussions, yeah, and Monday to Friday. No alcohol here. No, we don't drink alcohol in this you, library. You, you, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but he's drinking Snapple! Hey, Charlie's drinking the Snapple! <laughs> Off camera. It's his kind of alcohol, but technically it's not alcohol. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Join us next time. Keep reading. Keep reading. Keep reading. Hi there, this is Josh, and on the next episode of Literary Gladiators, Ari, Trevor, Charlie, and I will be discussing I Dwell in Possibility by Emily Dickinson. If you like what you see on this channel, we highly encourage you to support us on Patreon. The money that we make on there will help us provide you, the viewer, with more exciting, warming material. Thank you, and for now, keep reading.